What's going on guys? I'm out here working on the E36 again, Just trying to get things ready to do the first start. And one of the big things that's left is to get the old gas out of the gas tank. I went ahead and I removed the uh, Corvette fuel filter regulator that I'm using because I don't want to pump old dirty gas through that. Connected that line to the feed coming from the tank. It goes into, this is just like a whatever gas jug that I have. I'm probably gonna fill this up. I also went to the store and I got a battery. So I got a cheapy battery just for now, just to get me going. I turned the ignition on and I wasn't getting any power to the fuel pump relay. And this is the fuel pump relay right here. And I metered it. I wasn't getting any power to it. The fuel pump relay, I'm not really 100% sure how this Fuel, there's a fuel pump relay here. Um, this is the LS harness from Wiring Specialties. I'm not really 100% sure how it is integrating with the factory fuel pump relay and fuse. Just to get the ball rolling on this, what I did is I jumped it. There was a fuse next to it here. Um, and that had power for when I turned the key on, there's power here. So I just jumped it over. And now when I turn the key, You can see I have about half tank of gas. I also got 109,000 miles. But as you can see, I am pumping fuel. And it doesn't look that great either. It's a little brown. For right now, I'm just getting as much of this out as I can. Then I can dive into the fuel tank and uh, change the pump. So yeah, just one more thing that I'm doing out here just to kind of get things ready to, to fire this thing up. So I'm pretty excited that I turned the key on and like I was able to roll down the windows. I had to find the switches and plug them in, but I was able to roll the windows down and the flashers were on, the blinkers work. Uh, obviously the front blinkers don't work because they're, my whole front, the whole front wiring harness is a mess. This is like the harness that goes to the front of the car and there's all kinds of like weird stuff. Like I don't even know what half of this is, but there's, broken wires and I don't want to move it too much because this is all live and there's like bare wires in this anyway yeah we're pumping fuel and we're getting closer all right guys uh it's getting down to the end of the tank here you can see that's it yet again out here working on the E36 I got a little package in the mail I got some spark plugs I got some spark plug wires these are just cheap JDM speed uh, whatever from Amazon. We'll see if uh, these are going to work for me. They may not. Some of them, most of them will work. There'll probably be a couple cylinders where I might need longer wires, but we'll see. I also got the BMW coolant temp sensor, the BMW oil pressure sensor. These BMW sensors are required so that you can make the dashboard work. So your coolant temp um, on the BMW gauge cluster will work and the oil pressure light will come on um, you you know on the BMW cluster I also got this is uh, a belt tensioner that's gonna go here I don't have bolts for that so that's not gonna go on but what I'm gonna work on now is getting the oil pressure sensor and the coolant sensor installed and we'll see you know what I get done. But I'm probably gonna have to take the uh, coolant lines off, these ones, uh, to get to that oil pressure sensor. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. do this with the motor out. I'm gonna um, take the intake manifold off. Unfortunately, uh, that just needs to be done.
see if I can maybe get a wrench on that. There we go. Okay. Well, that was a pain. Do this before you put your motor in for sure. The wiring specialties kit came with this adapter to, to adapt the BMW oil pressure switch to the LS block. It has this copper crush washer. You want to make sure that's on there. Thread it in. Should thread right into the block. Adapter is a 22 millimeter. it's nice and snug so I got my BMW oil pressure sensor and the part number is 201 1515 looks like this let me get out of the bag looks like this and then we can verify this is the oil pressure plug plugs in there so now this should screw right into here and it also has a little crush washer That might be a 21, it's a 22 as well, let me see. It is. Screw that guy in there. Okay. There we go, now we got oil pressure. And I'm gonna leave this off for right now. I'm gonna move to the, uh, the coolant pressure sensor, which is over here. The way this works is you have your GM coolant temp sensor is going to be over here on the driver's side and then over here on the back of the head there's going to be a plug. Let's see if I can get you in there. See that plug right there? So we're going to take that plug out and, uh, and then we're going to put the uh, BMW coolant temp sensor should thread right in there. Now plugs out. So this is the BMW coolant temp sensor. You can see the thread size should thread right into the block, right into the head. Here's the part number. Zero two eight zero one three zero zero two six. Put a little bit of plumber's tape on there. Threads right into the block. 19 mil socket will fit right over top. And you want to go in a tightening direction. And then you're going to find a wire over here and it's going to say ECT gauge, electronic coolant temp gauge. And that's just going to slip right on there. I'm gonna go ahead and put the intake manifold back on.
right, so this is what I'm working on now. I got the spark plugs in the passenger or in the driver's side here, and uh, this is really the coil that's going to give me the, a hard time here. This this gap between uh, this is like a position sensor for the ABS, and there's not a lot of room in there. So I got this spark plug wire there. I'm going to try and get this on. Uh, I'm going to pop this out try and get it on and then push put this back in but little update i'm working on getting the spark plug wires hooked up on the driver's side i'm waiting on the, a starter so the passenger side i'm just going to leave alone for now try and get this buttoned up i also got these little heat sleeve johnnies not completely necessary since i have the headers wrapped but uh, i'm throwing them on there anyway because why not i got all the spark plug wires on the passenger side they're looking okay this back one's a little suspect with the we'll see, we'll see how that's going to work out well i don't think that's going to be a permanent solution i think i need a longer i think i need a longer uh plug wire for there but right now i'm working on making the fuel line melissa came to visit me in the garage right now i'm working on making the fuel line i just put this did this one end on here and i'm going to loop it and go down here and measure it and cut it. All right, so I got my fuel line here. I got it looped to go down. I'm gonna try and run it along the frame rail side there. I, can, I think I can stay pretty tight. see what it looks like under here all right so here's the here's the Corvette fuel filter that we're gonna be using for this swap it's gonna go like that so we need to cut this fuel line about right here so I'm gonna go ahead and snip that I got the line cut to the length guys sorry i got like uh interrupted by some people stopping by but i got the fuel line made um this is the line so i'm gonna go ahead and route it down in here i finished the fuel line it is uh kind of installed here i wrapped it in that that gold foil same kind of stuff i've been using for everything so here's the fuel line it runs down goes under here and uh i got it terminated there i still gotta screw this up here i'm just working waiting for the back side here i don't know what i'm gonna do if i'm gonna keep this kind of set up onto the factory line or if i'm gonna run a whole new uh 6a in back to the pump i'll probably do that but we'll see uh, i am short on ends i don't know if i can reuse those ends i'm not really sure i guess i could probably take these apart and reuse these ends i'm not sure uh, but for right now i want to get the fuel pump out and in order to do that I have to remove this I'm gonna I don't have to but I'm gonna remove this seat and then remove the back seat so uh, let me go ahead and do that all right guys I got the seat out and look at this I am making money with this car look at all this money some old gum this is all good stuff more over here look at this
Lots of cash. There's probably more under here somewhere. Definitely going to vacuum this thing out while I have the seat out. But now I need to figure out how to get... Okay. All right. Well, I figured out how to get the back seat out. There we go. Oh, there's toothpaste under there. Look at that. There we go. Here is like a bunch of stereo stuff. I really don't know what a, a lot of this stuff is, but... Uh, there should be like a fuel tank back here somewhere. I don't know where, but probably under this. I'm not too sure. Okay guys, I'm here in the back seat. Uh, I got the front seat out. We got a, a funding boost for the build here. Probably a couple dollars worth of change. And a whole bunch of trash. Really random stuff. Here's some uh, some Enamel Health Colgate. That's good to have. That was under the seat. I think I should drive it from back here. Anyway, I'm pretty positive that the fuel pump's under here because uh, there's wires going under there and that's, that would make sense. So I'm going to pull this panel off and we'll see if there's a... Uh, a pump under there got the screws out of the cover let's see here oh it looks like a fuel pump to me it looks like a fuel pump housing to me we got fuel lines it looks pretty cruddy yeah I'm gonna vacuum this out but I guess I turn this oh that's tight Okay, I'm going to vacuum this out. A little tip for you guys when you're vacuuming tight spaces, you get one of these little hoses and just kind of tape it in there and it works pretty good. So let's get started sucking up this dirt. I got it pretty much cleaned up. It's still pretty dirty, but I'm not too worried about it. Um, so I'm trying to figure out how to get this ring off and I can only assume that I have to spin it. So I, I got this flathead and a mallet and I'm just kind of hammering on it uh, to try and get this thing to rotate a little bit, but it hasn't moved at all. So I'm going to keep trying, um, but there's not really a good spot to put the camera in here. Maybe I can do something like, like that, but it's probably going to fall. I'm hitting, so we'll see. Oh, there goes the camera. <laughs> It's starting to turn, so that's all you gotta do is just hit it with a flathead and a mallet and spin this off. I'm gonna vacuum this out again and keep going. I got the clamps off for the fuel lines, and I'm gonna pull them off now. It smells like fuel in here. That's probably the return. Shove these off to the side. I don't want to get shoved off to the side. Woo, smells like fuel in here. There's our ring. I'm really going to try and shove these down here. up out of here. Do this one-handed. There we go. There's the fuel tank. Doesn't look too bad in there. So let's get this over to the bench. Uh, let me clean this up. 
there we go nice and clean uh, I did start to actually work on it uh, let me get you set up here so I did start to uh, take this apart all right let's get this clamp off of here Well, good thing we're not reusing that fuel pump. Ah, there we go. Okay. And we'll set that off to the side. Let's see if we can get this fuel pump out of here. So I kind of want to put a mark. I'm going to put a Sharpie mark so I know where to line this up at. It's just a rough mark there. Oh, there we go. Okay, old pump. So this is going to be the problem. That's kind of going to be my issue. How do I keep it in there? I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do that yet. side off here and then we're going to be able to just clamp it on there clamp it nice and tight it won't go anywhere
fill this uh, this hole here with some two-part epoxy. I'm using this marine grade stuff. It's pretty chemical resistant. All right, guys, welcome back. Uh, the GoPro died on me there. So I got the wires in. I'm not sure where it died at, but I got I put some epoxy in here that still needs to set up while that is curing. Um, I'm just putting some pins on the end of here so I can uh, get the connector on here for the fuel pump. All right, just gonna put the fuel pickup sock in there. Okay, uh, I'm gonna put this in the car now. Go ahead and try and fit the uh, fuel assembly back in there. Okay guys, the GoPro really needs to charge, but um, I did run to the store and I got clamps. And I also tied the fuel pump into the stock wiring. I just wired it straight into the stock wiring for now. This is just to get um, the car started and running, but it is going to be run off of a relay with a, a heavy duty wire coming from the battery. Before I finish buttoning up the fuel pump cover, I'm just going to make sure that it runs. And I'm going to do so by jumping that wire that I had jumped before. So let's hook this up. I'm gonna set you here. I'm gonna get a piece of wire so I can jump that. Okay, we should hear the pump now. Oh yeah. Nice. So the fuel pump's tested. So we're gonna go ahead and put this cover back on. Okay, and the other thing that we're gonna finish up is we're gonna get this, uh, this mounted here. Okay, it is done. Uh, that's gonna do for now. I'll secure this up out of the way somehow. All right, guys, that's going to be it for the video. Thanks for watching. I'm super excited. Next video, I'm turning the key and we're starting this thing up. I'm sure that you can see behind me a lot of things have happened. Um, I'm pretty far behind on YouTube, so let me get caught up. Uh, I put a lot in this one video kind of for that purpose to, to you know, fast forward us. Um, so I appreciate you watching make sure that if you're not already subscribed you hit the subscribe button because That will let you get the alert for the next video Which is when we turn the key and we can finally hear what the BMW sounds like with that 5.3 and the cam and all that so uh, I'm gonna end it off there and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video
Got it, dude. <laughs>